and welcome to Lincoln View High School for tonight's matchup between the Ada Bulldogs and the Lincoln View Lancers. I'm Nick Garlock alongside Dave Bowen and Dave. Season's starting to wind down. We got tournaments actually already underway for a few teams, but there's still some business to be settled in the Northwest Conference. Nate, great to be your wingman tonight, and you are absolutely correct. Business to be settled. Ada 6-0 in the Northwest Conference. Lincoln View 7-0. It's at the end of the season. It's not for all the marbles because Ada still needs to play Columbus Grove, but this game will go a long way as to determine who will be the conference champion this year. Absolutely. The Bulldogs that need to have a win to stay alive for that conference championship, the Lincoln View Lancers, they've already won a piece of that technically, but they want that outright title, and they can get that by winning tonight. We're going to take a look at the starting lineups. Here are the Ada Bulldogs. They will come to the plate first. They're going to be led off by the pitcher, Jenna Bassett. Batting second, Adra Preston. Number or batting third will be Natlin McLean. So Jenna Bassett, the pitcher, very successful season she's had on the mound, but a very good hitter as well as the first pitch from Taylor Post, the NWC Player of the Year, goes in for a strike. Not a bad batting average when you lead your team at 532. That's more than a hit. Every other time up. That's <laughs> impressive. Yeah, you, you have a job as a leadoff hitter, and uh, it turns out Jenna not only can pitch real well, she can hit real well as mm -hmm. well. All around great softball player, just a junior. She's a first-team Northwest Conference selection this year as well. You talk about the first-team Northwest uh, selections. Is that one's going to be hit out of play? It's going to be – or no, it's not. It looked like that was going to go behind the plate. Great job fielding position was Grace Brickner. And she was right up against the fence, caught that for the first out. Grace Brickner, a second team Northwest Conference selection. We have 12 players in the starting lineup, six on each squad that did receive all league honors. And we'll throw those out as the game goes on. Yeah, a lot of very good softball players on the diamond tonight. Should make this for an excellent matchup. This one's going to be hit into foul territory behind the third base bag. 0-1-1 count for Adra Preston. Adro bats 328 for the Ada Bulldogs. 6 and 0 in league conference or league action. 17 and 3 overall are the Ada Bulldogs. Lincoln View comes in 22 and 4, ranked 7th in the last OHSAA poll prior to the start of tournament. Post deliver. This one's going to be hit deep as that one is going to clear the fence. What a hit by Adra Preston as Adra got all of that one. It went out into deep left center field, and the Bulldogs are on the scoreboard first. Adra Preston post puts one down the middle of the plate, a place that she doesn't throw the ball very often, and Adra Preston takes advantage of it over the blue fence, 222 feet out there, and puts Ada up one to nothing here in the early going. Trailing is not something that the Lancers are used to, especially with Post out there on the mound. So we will see how Post is able to respond as Madeline McLean is going to step in. She's today's catcher, her first at bat of the evening. Post delivers. This one's going to be in the dirt. McLean, she comes to the plate batting 410, the third best average on this Bulldog squad. Post delivers. This one's going to be found right behind us out of play. Brings the count to one and one. Both of these teams had to play last night. The Lancers were able to come away with a big victory, 11 to one. That one's a little bit tighter than the score led on as a big sixth, sixth inning, excuse me, allowed Lincoln View to come away with that victory as the Bulldogs had to uh, fight and they had a fight on their hands from New Bremen. As that one was all tied late at 2-2 two to two before New Bremen was able to push ahead to go ahead score, and they came away with a 3-2 victory. Yeah, Ada, those three losses, all of the one-run variety, Nate. A little bit of a jam shot just off of the outstretched glove of the shortstop, Laney Spear, as Natalie McLean is going to get down to first for a single. Nice piece of hitting. That was in on the hand. She fought that off and got it over Spears' glove. She did touch it, but that's a nice single for Natalyn McLean. Those three one-run losses for Ada to Van Buren, Riverdale, and then, as you said, last night to New Bremen in district semifinal action 3-2. to two. 
So now it's Tessa Griffith. She's going to be playing center field tonight. She's going to step to the plate, the cleanup hitter. First pitch takes it on the outside. Comes to the plate batting 345 on the year. Not sure if you can tell from our cameras, but there is, I wouldn't say it's a hard rain, but it's one of those rains where as that one goes in for a strike, it, you know it's there, you're gonna get wet, it makes things a little bit slippery, it's gonna be harder to grip the ball tonight. It, it's going to be around pretty much the whole game as well. Not sure that we're gonna have those heavy torrential downpours, but just enough to kind of just be in the way. Exactly, it's the proverbial mosquito that you can't kill, just bugging you a little bit. Uh, Plays with your psyche. Both teams got to bring mental toughness to the game because of the weather, especially the pitchers in the circle, Bassett and Post. Post finds herself down. Two balls, one strike, one out. Pitch on its way. Going to be strike two. Gets her on the off speed. It's a little bit of a mixed bag here so far in the first inning for Post. As she got the first out on a foul out right behind home plate. And then the second batter of the game, Adrian Preston able to deliver one over the fence. And then just a little bit of a bloop single. But sometimes those are the innings that can get away with you or get away from you. If you can't bear down those, you know, you make one mistake, it's one hit. Now it's a home run. Now it's another one off of a glove. And those are the things that can kind of snowball on you. But Post, very experienced, as we mentioned, just named NWC Player of the Year not too long ago, just a few days ago, actually. And... Um, a very experienced player out on the mound. And, you know, a day like today with this weather and kind of how this start is, I think you're going to have to see that leadership and that experience come out. And she hits this one right back at post, almost right on cue, but she throws that one a little bit wide. Throw's going to come down to third, and it is not going to be there as it's going to glance off the third baseman's glove. So there's going to be a throwing air by post. It's going to lead to a runner on second and third. Yeah, post fielded that ball. Excellently there in the circle, and it was the right call. She was going to second right away. There was no hesitation. Unfortunately, she did not connect with Laney Spear, who was coming to cover the bag from shortstop. Ball goes out into the outfield, and the runners move up on the play as well. Second and third, one out. Big opportunity, as you said. Taylor Post, one of the best pitchers not only in the Northwest Conference, but in Northwest Ohio. Ada, a chance to put a crooked number up here in the top of the first. First pitch goes in. It's going to be a ball. See Ashlyn Price coming in tight from third base. Trying to cut down something to hopefully hold that runner at third and still be able to get the out at first. Yeah, will Coach Bassett have Carly Wagner go with a suicide squeeze here or anything? I don't think so. Look, play for the big inning here early. Just hits the outside portion of the plate and is going to be strike one. Brings the count to one and one. Carly Wagner, the second leading hitter for Ada at 415. So I don't think you want to have her lay one down here, even though you're going against one of the best in Taylor Post. See if she can make contact and score two. And there's the bunt. There so it's it is. Going to go foul just off the third baseline. It's going to be strike two. So just when they thought maybe they had it figured out. Decided that might be a good time to try to see if they couldn't keep uh, get the Lancers napping a little bit. And that one ends up being foul. So got to think that the bun is going to be called off now. Don't want to risk that strikeout on the third or on the foul. And she's going to swing through. Strikeout for Post. And it's her first of the night. Nice pitch by Post on the outer third. And then we're right behind home plate here at Lincoln View. And that ball moved off the plate. Wagner unable to make contact. Looks like we're going to have a pinch runner come in. Not sure if that lead runner, it was Natalie McLean, the catcher, if maybe that slide, maybe a little bit in the leg. Maybe she got jammed going into the bag. She did look like she was running a little gingerly back to the dugout. But either way, you see Coach Bassett going to bring in a pinch runner down at third as Post is going to try to get out of this first inning without any more damage. It's going to be outside, ball one. Reese Jordan in the batter's box. Bats 3-12 for Ada. That's the second baseman. Big at bat both ways right here in the top of the first. That one goes inside on Jordan. 2-0 count. 
and running down there at third base coming in is Sophia Fleming. Finally caught her number there. She's entered the game for the catcher, as you said. That one's right down the heart of the plate. As Taylor Pose gets her first strike of this at bat. Two and one. Two outs here for the Bulldogs. Runners on second and third trying to see if they can't add to this lead. Post pitch, this one's going to be popped up. As Lincoln View is able to squeeze it, the left fielder, Emma Bowersock, able to get underneath it. And that is going to do it for the Bulldogs here in the first. It is going to be the Lancers coming to the plate, the bottom of the first. They're up next. The Lincoln View Lancers come to the plate. Leadoff hitter, Addie Stevens. She'll be roaming center field for the day. She's going to try to get things kicked off as they come down trailing 1 0. But this is a Lincoln View team, Dave, that has a very prolific offense. They are averaging over 10 runs a game on the season. So I expect that they will try to come out here and see if they can't put up some big numbers right away. You're exactly right. And these first three hitters, Addie Stevens, Ashlyn Price, and Taylor Post, batting averages separated by one point apiece. Stevens at 472, Price at 473, Post at 471. I don't want to be the pitcher facing that. <laughs> As this one's going to get fouled, let's see if they're able to get out of play. And great hustle that time as Ada was able to get to that one right before it got to the dugout. And I believe that was the first baseman, Adra Preston, who got the home run in the top part of the inning, who was able to get to that one and record the first out. Does a great job coming to the fence in front of her team's dugout, reels that in, and not only a great catch, but the rest of the team, it was great to see their nonverbals raising their hands, yelling for that effort put on by the first baseman, Adra Preston, to retire Stevens. So now it's going to be Ashlyn Price stepping into the batter's box. She pops this one high into the air. This one is going to be retired as the left fielder, Dela Preston, excuse me, able to squeeze that one for the second out. So Dela Preston with a nice catch out there. And Bassett, two-thirds of the way through this juggernaut first three for Lincoln View. Well, we talked about the impressive offense of Lincoln View, but you have to look at who was on the mound in Jenna Bassett. She has had a phenomenal season, almost 200 strikeouts on the season, just over a little over a one-run ERA, as this one's also going to get popped up. Is this one going to carry? Is it's going to go to the base of the fence? And it is going to be a stand-up double for Taylor Post. And she just missed hitting a home run of her own. Just missed the operative words right there, Nate. You're right. She hit that one with authority, got it up in the air. We do have the, the drizzle, if you will, but no wind really to speak of. Um, but in that situation right there, the left fielder, Dela Preston, Got turned around a little bit. I don't know if she'd have been able to catch it, even if she had a bead on it. But now the Lancers with a scoring threat with two outs. Yeah, you wonder. Their wind is, you can see a little bit, but nothing that should be too uh, troublesome. And you wonder if she looked up, maybe some of the rain, because when she first looked it up, it looked like it was just going to be a pop fly right to her. Not sure if she read it real well off the bat. But either way, a stand-up double for post. And now Grace Brickner comes to the plate, and she finds herself down 0-1. And just like that, after a foul tip, it is 0-2. The foul tip and our, our umpires for this game, Dan Hunt behind the plate and Lucas Nagel on the bases. So Brickner down 0-2, takes this one high and outside. Well, as we were mentioning, Jenna Bassett, she has had a phenomenal year on the mound. You know, if it wasn't, you know, sometimes you see these, these players in whatever sports you're looking at, you know, you, they're just phenomenal players but they don't quite get the attention that maybe they deserve because they're playing with somebody who is just a little bit more, somebody that we don't see come along very often. And I think for Jenna Bassett, that's kind of maybe why more people aren't aware of the season that she's had because, you know, Taylor Post plays in the same conference. She gets a little bit more of that attention, but Bassett just does a great job there in the bottom of the first as she works around a two-out double and she holds the Lancers scoreless. We are going to go to the top of the second. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to the View High.
High School. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpole, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your game needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. I'd also like to thank tonight's presenting sponsor, Lonix Jewelry. Lonix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at lonix.com. Top of the second, the Bulldogs on top, 1-0, thanks to an Audra Preston home run back in the first. And they are going to come to the plate. Leading off, it will be Katie Sizemore, the third baseman, as the Bulldogs are hoping that they can get the offense going yet again here in the second. Katie Sizemore, senior for the Bulldogs in the number seven hole. In the eight hole, it'll be Daisy Robinson, also a senior. These two seniors, the only seniors on the Ada roster, Nate, and Coach Bassett talked about how these two seniors have provided great leadership all year long, and they are the glue girls for this squad. They love softball, love getting the uniform dirty, and the rest of the team has responded to that. Post pitch is taken to deep center field. That's going to be off the center fielder's glove. Going to hurry to get that one in. And she is able to limit Sizemore to just a single. But Ada, once again, with runners on the base path. I'll tell you what, we do. We've talked about it. We have two premier pitchers here. But the batters are saying for both squads, hey, don't forget about us. We're getting in that batter's box ready to rock. And solid contact has occurred on both sides uh, of the field for both teams here in the early going. So now it's Daisy Robinson. She sends this one back up the center, a little bloop to the center fielder. Nice hustle by Sizemore. She was able to get to second, and just like that, Ada has runners on first and second with nobody out. The two seniors set the table here in the top of the second. Now let's see what Coach Bassett does with the number nine hitter, Eleni Buxton. I really think we'll see the bunt come into play right now. Small ball, I think Lincoln View is anticipating that as well with Ashlyn Price at third way in, ready to guard the, the bunt. And Laney Spear at short is going to have to cover third. Here comes the second baseman as well. So Lincoln View completely selling out that time on the bunt, but you never even saw Buxton offer at it. You wonder if the hold sign was on for Buxton just to see if Ada could try to sniff out what Lincoln View's strategy was. Allie, yeah, Allie Miller, the second baseman, coming in hard almost to a point of safety concern. Yeah. As this one is going to be hit down that first base side and out of play. I mean, she's about six feet from the, from the box from home plate. Might be a little too tight in my opinion, but. And Lincoln View is obviously – Completely convinced that a bunt was coming, but Buxton decided to swing away. Finds herself down 0-2. You know, Coach Bassett, he may be the kind of gunslinger that now with Lincoln View thinking there won't be a bunt with two strikes because if you foul it off, it's a strikeout. She may square up. Let's see. Nope. It's going to dribble off the end of the bat. They're going to get the easy out at first. Runners are going to move up. So it wasn't an actual bunt, but it was just as effective. As Lincoln View is able to get the first out of the inning, and there's runners now on second and third. You're right, Nate. It was not a bunt. It was a swinging bunt, if you will, and a productive out for the Bulldogs. As the runners move up and the lineup turns over, we go back to the top, and Coach Bassett's got to be thrilled to see his 532 batting average player, Jenna Bassett, in the box. So Bassett flew out as she hit a pop-up right behind home plate. And during her first at bat, finds herself down 0-1 here. Ashlyn Price came charging in. I don't think you're going to take the bat out of Bassett's hands with one out and runners in scoring position. She's going to be swinging. As Post delivers, that one's going to be low and outside, even the count at 1-1. One and, one. and I think the Lincoln View defense has come to that conclusion after the first pitch as well. So that time... Price stays home, doesn't charge the plate. Great opportunity for the Bulldogs to increase this 1-0 to zero lead. Bassett can try to help out her cause by driving in a few runs here. This one's going to be low and inside. Count goes to 2-1. and one. Yeah, Taylor Post, she knows who's in the batter's box right now. Can't throw one down Broadway. 
Got to find, got to paint the black. I think we'll look for her to go to the outside third, the outer third right here. Yeah, it's looked like where she was trying to go. You wonder if Taylor's just having a little bit of a hard time with the grip on that ball as she doesn't have the command that we're used to seeing out of her. The count now runs a three and one. Hitters count for Jenna Bassett. She's got runners out on second and third, trying to extend this one nothing lead. And here's the pitch, it's gonna be low. Bases are loaded. Audra Preston, who already has a home run on the night, is gonna step to the plate and see if she can not deliver the big strike again. And Coach Schwab's gonna take a coach's visit to the mound for the Lancers. So coach Schwab obviously wants to come out and wants to talk to the whole team, but just wanna make sure that Post is kinda in the right head space, wanna make sure that they're all on the same page, especially where they would like the ball to go. As it looks like we're gonna have a change yeah, he's going to make some moves here. I think he's concerned about, well, I'm not quite sure what he's concerned about. Or 21's just changing. Let's see what we've got going on here. But wow. Coach Schwab, Schwab, we said that uh, Taylor Post was the NWC Player of the Year. Coach Schwab is the NWC Coach of the Year as selected by his coaching counterparts in the league. But he's making a pitching change. And so a little bit of a surprise here, an early pitching change, but obviously the coaches know what is at stake here. Taylor Post ha not ha has not, excuse me, had her A stuff tonight, and Coach Swamp is going to look to make a change on the mound. While the pitching change happens, we'll step aside. We'll be back on to the We are back at Lincoln View High School where the Lancers have made a pitching change. Number 21, Sidney Fackler, has come on to pitch. And we're going to see Taylor Post move over to third base. Ashlyn Price is the new first baseman. As a bunt comes, this one's going to get away. But Lincoln View able to corral that one quickly. Good bunt coverage as far as the defense. Everybody in motion for the Lancers. You have a force at home plate. You just got to touch the plate. You don't need to tag the runner out. So the book on post is still open though. She is responsible for the three runners currently standing out on first, second, and third. As Faulkner is gonna come in and try to see if she can't limit the damage. Count is one and one. Audrey Preston swings through that one. Nice movement on that pitch by Fackler. Again, starts on the outer third and goes into the left-handed batter's box. Preston unable to get the bat on it. One and two's your count. This will be a huge at bat for Fackler. She's able to get out of this one with a potential strikeout. Count is going to go to two and two. Sydney Fackler, a 2.71 ERA on the season. Contact made right back to the pitcher. Nice job getting the force out at home. As Fackner does a nice job of playing her or fielding her position, excuse me. And that is going to be a two outs. And Lincoln View, even though there is a big threat out there on the base path, they are one out away of getting out of this one without any damage. Yeah, Natalyn McLean, the number three hitter, steps to the plate, comes into the game batting 410. Going to be a strike. 0 and 1. Fackler pounding the outer third right there again. McLean looking to yank the ball to left field. She's not going to be able to do that with the outside pitch. Fackler's second pitch goes outside. Runs the count to 1 and 1. Sydney Fackler again at 2.71 ERA. She does have 11 wins on the season. Started nine games for Lincoln View this year. Ackler's pitch is taken. It's going to be high. Center fielder is going to come in, calls off the second baseman, and Lincoln View works through a jam as Sidney Fackler comes in and shuts the door. The score is going to remain a one nothing. Lincoln View is going to come to the plate looking to see if they can't get on the scoreboard. Number 22, Laney Spear, the shortstop, will be leading it off for the Lancers here in the bottom of the second as Lincoln View is only able to get one hit back in the first. And we'll see if they can get the offense going here with Spear. 
Laney Spear, the second team Northwest Conference selection, leads this Lancer softball team with seven home runs. She could tie this up with one swing of the bat. Spear gets a nice cut on that one, but a little underneath. That one's going to go behind the press box. The sophomore bats 430 and also is in a tie with Annie Stevens with the most RBIs on this squad with 33. Spear finds herself down 0-2 here to begin her at bat as Jenna Bassett just continues to deal. Spear back into the batter's box. Comes the pitch, and this one's going to be high just out of the outstretched arms of the catcher. Runs the count to one ball, two strikes. That one got away from Jenna Bassett a little bit, but that's okay. 0-2 pitch. You don't want to throw anything down the middle right there anyway, but she almost hit this camera that's in the, the fence there. That might have been an, an expensive result. Comes right back, brings that one down a little bit. Goes to the outside part of the plate as Spear swings, can't connect. And that is your first out of the second. First out of the second inning and back-to-back -back K's going back to the bottom of the first for Bassett. Second baseman Allie Miller now up to bat. She swings through that one. Allie Miller, the junior, we saw her from second base, the bunk coverage that Lincoln View implemented, charging all the way in from that position. You see that once in a while, not very often. Sometimes you base it on your speed of your first baseman. Sometimes you just like your first baseman being at the bag defensively. Bassett sends this one on the inside part of the plate as Miller pulls this one foul, runs the count to one ball, two strikes. Allie Miller, all the firepower around her. Her 333 batting average doesn't look that impressive against everybody else, but overall, that's a good year. Bassett has this one sail high. Evens the count at 2 2. So Lincoln View with just the one hit here so far this afternoon. Looking to make it two as this one's going to get fouled straight back and out of play. Allie Miller staying alive as Jenna Bassett just continues to pound the strike zone. I'm impressed with Ada's mentality here coming into this game. You know, last, last night, a heartbreaking loss in the district semifinal, 3-2. to two. They have come ready to compete. Talking to Coach Bassett, he was concerned about that. Just are we going to be able to step up and play? And his team has up to this point. Great at bat by Allie Miller as she was able to battle back and draw the walk. And that is going to bring the now pitcher, Sidney Fackler, up to the plate. That is the first base on balls issued by Jenna Bassett. The Lancers will look to get that free pass around the bases. Fackler watches that one come across for strike one. Sydney Fackler bats 463. She was a first team Northwest Conference selection. Again, just being the second inning with that batting average, I don't think you're going to square her up. That one came inside on the hands. Fackler able to battle that one into the center field. And yep. now Lincoln View, runners at first and second, looking to see if they can't put something across the, uh, the home plate. Nice piece of hitting there by Sydney Fackler. Yeah, I didn't think she was going to square up to bunt at all, and she doesn't. Runner in scoring position for the Lancers in Allie Miller with Sydney Fackler at first. So now it is going to bring up Sylvia Longstreth. Left hander steps to the plate. One's going to be high and outside. Ball one. Longstreth with that slap action in the batter's box. Trying to send that one the other way, it looks like. She's able to foul that one back off into the fence to even the count at one and one. 
Big at bat right here for both teams. Bassett sends this one outside. You can almost tell Bassett's trying to go along with how it looks like Longstreth wants the bat. If they want to hit this one to third, they were okay with it. It's going to get popped up to the shortstop and field fly. And the runners will stay at first and second. There's now two down. Nice catch by Carly Wagner at shortstop. And as you said, the infield fly rule in effect. First and second base occupied with less than two outs. So two outs in the inning. Emma Bowersock comes to the plate, trying to see if she can deliver the big hit. And we mentioned that Lincoln View did play last night, but they also got off to a slow start last night as well. That was a very tight game all the way into the sixth before the bats finally came alive, and they ended up with the run rule victory in the sixth inning to move on. So this has kind of been a little bit of a theme this week for them where, you know, they don't need to panic. You know, the offense has taken a little bit getting used to. This one's going to deliver to second base. Ada doing a nice job out there on the diamond, though, and they get the third out of the inning. After two innings of play, the Bulldogs on top, one nothing. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Lincoln View High School. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima Walpock Delta St. St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Top of the third brings the Bulldogs back to the plate as Tessa Griffith is going to lead off for Ada. She's going to send this one down the first baseline. And a nice job by the second baseman. Allie Miller goes over. She gathers that one in for the first out. Yeah, nice catch by Miller there, ranging to her left. That all-important first out of the inning. You want to keep that leadoff batter off the bases when you got a Donnie Brook like this going on, one to nothing in the top of the third. So now it's Carly Wagner stepping to the plate. Shortstop struck out her last time up. But that was against Taylor Post. Now she sees Fackler for the first time. Going to roll this one down to second. And that is quickly out two of the inning. Well, you know, we talked about the possibility of Post coming back into the circle, and she has done exactly that, Nate. It's Taylor Post back in there. And up here in the press box, we just don't get the signal or told by the coaches or the umpiring crew. But Post back in the circle here in the top of the third. Absolutely. Completely missed that one. So thanks, Dave. And you know, at post, not sure what was going on. If she just had something going on with a finger, she needed to try to uh, work through or, or what was going on. But she's come back here in the third, and she has quickly gotten two outs. Well, and Eric Schwab, you know, he used it to take some time and break the momentum that, was, that Ada was building in that last half inning, and it worked to his uh, coaching strategy, keeping Ada from scoring in the top of two. Now oh, here's Post, she's ahead in the count. One ball, two strikes, and you know, what a luxury as a coach it is to have to go out and take Taylor Post out, obviously not the start that they were thinking, whatever was going on, whatever they needed to, to take advantage of, but to be able to put in Sidney Fackler and for her to be, and knowing what you're getting out of that pitcher, and for her to be able to step in and perform like she did, even if it was just for a little over an inning. Yeah, and that's what you expect out of your seniors. Sydney Fackler steps up, answers the call, puts out the fire, and now she's back at first base. Ashlyn Price back at third. This one's going to be sent to a shortstop. As Lane Spear does a great job of gathering that one in and getting the third out. A 1-2-3 inning by the Bulldogs. The Lancers coming to the plate. Addison Stevens is going to come to the plate to begin the bottom of the third inning for Lincoln View. Find themselves down 1-0, but seem to finally maybe get a little bit going there in the second, Dave. Exactly. A 1-2-3 inning for Ada in the top, and now the Lancers look to... Turn the lineup over and started at the top of their lineup with Addie Stevens 
And again, 472 batting average. Price behind her at 473. Post the, in the three hole at 471. We said this game in our opening has a lot to do with the Northwest Conference as far as who's going to be the champion. As we see that pitch right there, a strike on the outside of the plate. Ada needs to win and then beat Grove to win outright. They have never won a Northwest Conference uh, title in softball. Lincoln View has four titles. Crestview leads overall with 21. Last year, Crestview won the conference. Ada was second with one loss. Lincoln View with two losses to Ada and Crestview. So a lot to be said here. Ada in, with their last opportunity as they are going to the BVC, the Blanchard Valley Conference, their last opportunity to win a league title. As that is going to be ball four for Addie Stevens. She will go down to first base. Ashlyn Price is going to step up now. And again, that always makes you a little nervous as a coach. Your pitcher puts that leadoff runner on. We'll see if Lincoln View looks to move her with the bunt, or are they going to try and do a straight steal, or just see what happens. There's the bunt. Pop this one up. Going to be an easy fly out as Stevens had to hurry and get back to first. As that was almost a double up opportunity for the Bulldogs. Yeah, as you said, Stevens, she was halfway towards second base, but did a nice job of finding the ball when she heard it hit the bat and hustled back to the bag to eliminate and keep the double play from happening. So now the pitcher, Taylor Post, steps to the plate. Last time up, she delivered a double all the way to the base of the wall, just missing, sending that one out for a home run. And she's going to see if she can't deliver a big hit yet again. That one's going to be a ball to even the count at one and one. Post swings through that one. A nice pitch on the inside as it is now a one ball, two strike count. Yeah, when you live on the outer third like Jenna Bassett has in this game thus far and then you break one to the inside, the batter thinks it's down the middle of the plate until it runs right up on him. A little too much rise on that one. Evens the count at two and two. Big pitch here. Bassett doesn't want to go to a full count, which would allow Stevens to get in motion on the pitch. See what we get right here, Nate. A great pitch as the bottom dropped out of that one. Post swings over top of it, and she is a strikeout victim. It is the second strikeout for Bassett here tonight. And that is going to bring Grace Brickner to the plate. And you are right. I miscounted. Thank you, partner. This is actually the third strikeout. She's had one in each inning so far. And that was a big strikeout for Ada and Jenna Bassett. So right now, try and strand Stevens at first. But Grace Brickner, the 392 batting average. This one's going to get chopped to third. And plenty of time as Ada able to get out of this inning. Jenna Bassett does a great job of working uh, around a leadoff walk. And that is going to bring the third inning to a close. After three, the Bulldogs still on top, one to nothing. We'll be back on WOSN. Nick Garland alongside David Bowen. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Favorite Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpole, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. Also like to thank tonight's presenting sponsor, Lawnick Jewelry. Lawnick's Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at lawnicks.com. First pitch swinging as this one can't be dug out by the first baseman, Ashlyn Price. Nice hustle down the line that time by the leadoff hitter, Katie Sizemore. Sizemore's going to reach on the air. She did the same thing the last time at bat as far as getting on base safely. It was a single in the second inning. Reaches on the air this time around. And just like Lincoln View in the last inning, Ada has their leadoff runner on. 
So we saw Jenna Bassett able to work around a leadoff runner. We'll see if Taylor Post can do the same. This one's going to be in for strike one. Both of these teams, as we said, they just outstanding seasons. Lincoln View comes in on a four-game winning streak, averaging 11 runs per game. Ada, before losing last night, a 12-game winning streak. This one's going to be found right in front of the plate. Runs the count to 0-2. Ada averages 10 runs per game. They do have, as we mentioned early, earlier, those three losses by just one run. So they are used to these tight games a little bit. And Lincoln View, they have some close ones, but they have some serious blowouts as well. This one's going to be sent down to third. Double play opportunity and can't get the transfer. And we may have and interference here. I think they're going to here. call interference. And we do. As that is going to knock out the lead runner. As you can see, the umpire is going to be Lucas Noggle going over to talk with Ada's coach to try to explain what happened. And you did see some contact over there on the transfer. It's you, a situation where Sizemore needed to slide. Didn't happen. But I thought they had her out at second that's what anyway. I, that's what I did as well. I thought you're going to receive a double play. Yeah. And, yeah, the and first you are because the correct. lead runner should have mm -hmm. been out regardless. And the runner at first now will be out due to the interference. And that is going, and that is the case. So that is going to be two outs now uh, due to the interference call on second. So just like that, two outs and Lincoln View out of a little bit of trouble. Yeah, that helps tremendously to clean the runners off the bases. Two outs, nobody on. So that's going to bring Eleni Buxton up to the plate. The right fielder stands in. She's going to pop this one up. As that is going to fall harmlessly into the glove of the third baseman. I believe that's Ashlyn Price to end the inning. So Ashlyn Price squeezes the third out. And a 1-2-3 inning for the Bulldogs will bring the Lancers back to the plate. Lancers are going to come to the to the plate. The bottom of the four still trailing one to nothing as the shortstop Laney Spears will step in to see if she can't get the inning started off right. Spears last time up, she was a strikeout victim. Bassett still on the mound for the Bulldogs. First pitch. Going to get away from her. Looked like it might have slipped out of her hands as that one was pretty much on the dirt the entire time. Hit the bottom of the fence, popped up over the fence. All sorts of action going on on that pitch. I'm just going to say Jenna Bassett's going to say, I don't want these Lincoln View batters digging in, getting in there nice and comfortable in the batter's box. This one's going to be high as Spears finds herself a head in the count, 2-0. We know she's crafty. No doubt about that is one Jenna Bassett. That one's going to get in for a strike as it hits the outside part of the plate. Runs the count to two balls, one strike. This one's playing out like I thought it would, Nate. I thought it'd be low scoring. Both pitchers bringing the ball to the plate. But what's been really, um, I'm, I'm not going to say that we didn't expect it, but the defenses have been really, really strong both ways. Uh, we only have one air in the game at this point in time. Laney Spear now in there with two ball, two strike count. This one's going to get away from Bassett. Going to run the count full. Yeah, the defenses have been well. And, you know, a lot of times when you see a successful pitcher, that's what you're going to find behind them. You know, they're not always going to be able to strike out everybody that comes to the plate as this one's going to get hit on a line to the third baseman. Allie Miller, you're back. Nice job by Katie Sizemore to pick that one off as Allie Miller now will step to the plate for her second at bat. And a few years ago, they moved the, the mound back three feet. It used to be 40 feet, it went to 43. 
um, that's where the game really changed quite a bit because you would have pitchers with 17, 18 strikeouts. This one's going to get popped up. See if it's going to stay in play as it just gets to the fence as the Bulldogs aren't able to gather that one in. And I think that was an excellent move to move the mound back three feet. The pitching is still very good as we're witnessing today, but the defense has come into play and you have to develop that whole team concept so much more. Um, and it's really made the game that much more enjoyable to watch. It's outside, this count goes even at one and one for the second baseman, Allie Miller. Madeline McLean, her nonverbals behind the plate when she caught that one, she thought that was a strike. Dan Hunt felt otherwise. It's his opinion that counts. This one's going to be high. Going to be two balls, one strike. Allie Miller, last time up, she was able to draw the walk. And eventually got herself down to second before the second inning kind of fizzled out for the Lancers. Going to clean the dish, make sure we can see the corners. Yeah, don't, we don't want to brag as we get to sit here where it's nice and dry. We still see plenty of umbrellas, but it looks like maybe the rain has slowed down a little bit. But, you know, that dirt out there, it, it doesn't really take a whole lot. It starts getting a little thicker, gets to be a little bit more muddy. So you can see uh, Dan Hunt wanting to make sure that everything on that mound was clearly exposed. Yeah, good product out there on the field. Greg Leith, the athletic director here at Lincoln View, has been very, very good to us, putting us up in here in this nice, dry press box. See, Allie Miller was, took that one out into foul territory to run the count to two and two. You said a lot of people with umbrellas out here. We have a great crowd. This one goes straight up as this is out in the center field. As you saw Tessa Griffith able to settle underneath it. That was going to be the second out of the inning. A great crowd. I, Mr. Lee did a little attendance count for me. And looks like we have around 136 people, softball fans, turning out for today's colossal confrontation. Nate? This one's going to get out to left field. It's going to drop. That was going to be a base hit for Sydney Fackler. That's her second hit of the night. She was able to get a single the last time she was up as well. And now Sylvia Longstreth will step up. Yeah, Fackler goes to right center field, her first at bat for a solid single. This one drops in front of De La Preston. Fackler, again, a first-team selection, one of the most improved players on this squad. Coach Schwab knew that Sidney Fackler had the potential to have a great year this year, but he has even been pleasantly surprised by what she's done for this Lancer squad. The right fielder watches that one hit the dirt, runs the count to 2-0. and oh. And able to make the correction as that one looked like it came right down the heart of the plate. That's a count of two balls, one strike. Bassett doing a nice job of changing speed so Longstreth can't time down this slap hitting opportunity. Longstreth able to get a piece of that one, but sends it straight behind. Count now two and two. And we've seen this out of Bassett where it looks like at times she, you know, has kind of maybe lost the field, the grip maybe. You know, she finds herself down in the count, you know, two balls, you know, whatever it is, and having a pitch from behind. But each time she's able to make the adjustment as Longstreth stays alive, takes that one out of bounds. But it never seems like there's any panic coming from her on the mound. Outstanding point, Nate. Couldn't agree with you more. It seems like a, maybe a pitch here or there. We've seen some pitches go to the backstop. But when it comes down to grit time, Bassett's right there bringing strikes. Maybe she held on to that one for a little bit too long as that one got high, runs the count full. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner on first. Lincoln View looking for a big hit as they trail one nothing. Longstreth waits for the pitch and she offers and doesn't connect as Bassett keeps her K streak alive. That is now one strikeout in each inning. Mm -hmm. And that brings the fourth inning to a close. After four innings of play, Lincoln View still finds himself down one. We'll be back on WOSA.
back to Lincoln View High School. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Nymph Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Nate Garlock along, alongside Dave Bowen as we bring you this big NWC matchup here tonight as the Bulldogs come to bat in the top of the fifth with the run, one run lead, and they have the top of their order to begin. Yeah, and our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken game time temperature. The game started at 5 o'clock. It was 70, 70 de degrees. It's dropped down 3 degrees, 67 now. So Jenna Bassett, her first at bat, uh, didn't actually have it written down, so I don't remember. Popped out to she the catcher. popped out, that's mm -hmm. what it was. She flied out to right behind a home plate. And her second and bat was able to draw the walk and has eventually made her way down to second base before that inning came to a close for the Bulldogs. Finds herself ahead in the count here. Two balls, one strike. As we said, we got a good old good one here, Nate. Lincoln View, they have been winning Northwest Conferences recently. Great tournament runs. Ada battling for a conference. They have tied their season win record this year 17 wins the most wins in program history and ada has tied that at this point in time now that's a sidebar because again right now they just want to take care of business here with this 1-0 lead protect it get the win tonight and then play columbus grove for an outright championship themselves but what a nice compliment to coach bassett and what he has done with this program getting it heading having it head in the right direction. So Taylor Post runs this one full. Three balls, two strikes. Bassett awaits this one as she puts it right back up the middle into center field as Jenna Bassett is going to have a single. So the leadoff hitter reaches safely for Ada. That has happened in the second inning and last inning, the fourth. So the third time in five innings, the leadoff hitter is on, and Coach Schwab is going to go to the circle. We'll see if he makes the same move here with Fackler coming in to pitch, and it does look like she's going to go get her pitching glove, rotate the first baseman glove out. So we will anticipate that we'd have the same type of changes that we had before where Taylor Post will move over to third, Ashlyn Price will move over to first with Sidney Faulkner or Fackler, excuse me, heading into the pitching circle. But we'll wait until all that is made official. As I wouldn't imagine Fackler would need too much time to warm up, so we'll keep it here. You know, and, you know, there's a lot that's going around into this game for both clubs. Everybody wants to win a conference championship. When coaches begin the season, you know, and you start marking things off and goals for your team, a conference championship is on everybody's board. Both of these teams have that ability to do that. But when you look at Ada, and one of the unique things about baseball and uh, softball in the spring, a lot of times you'll see regular season games continuing to be played even after the postseason has started. There is no other sport where that is the case. And here, Ada already knows the season is over. There is no postseason. They know that that's not coming for them. But this is that next best thing. It keeps them. This can be that postseason run for them that gives you that little bit of extra yeah it hurts last night but hey we get to get on the bus and we get to go potentially win a conference championship today you're exactly right Nate it's a decision you have to make are we going to compete or are we going to feel sorry for ourselves and it is clear that Ada is here to compete so Fackler she digs in in the pitcher's circle as she is facing the first baseman, Andra Preston. Didn't quite catch what the first pitch was, so we do know there's at least one strike up on the board. Regardless, Preston squaring up to bunt on both pitches. I think we just heard the umpire call 1-1. One, one. So it is a 1-1 one, one count. Preston takes that one on the inside. Two balls, one strike. Jenna Bassett down at first. Sydney Fackler now into pitch. It's about execution right now, Nate. See if they go back with the bunt offensively. Try and make put the pressure on the Lancer defense. They do not, and it's a ball outside. You know, you wonder too with the pitching change that Coach Schwab made. You know, we saw in the first inning 
Andre Preston take Taylor Post deep. You wonder if maybe they saw something in maybe the pitching matchup. And sometimes some batters just read other pitchers well, and they just didn't want to risk having that again, knowing the power that Preston had. Here it pays off as she flies out to center field, as that will be the first out of the inning. First out of the inning, and again, as you look at the at-bat as a whole, execution early in the at-bat, unable to get the bunt down, and then the fly out the center, unable to move Bassett to second and get her in scoring position. One out now, Fackler one-third of the way through the inning. Natalie McLean will step to the plate. Catcher had a single back in the first as they tried to get the, the Bassett as she was taking second. As the throw got there, looks like right at the same time as Bassett. Bassett into the glove, knocks it loose, and she's going to be safe at second. Lucas Noggle didn't have to make the call there. It would have been a tough one. The tag was up on the shoulder, but it might have been before Bassett got her foot on the bag. Regardless, the ball dribbles away. Bassett now in scoring position. Fackler delivers to the plate. This one's going to be bunted. And it is going to be a foul ball as it never got out of the batter's area. Yeah, that one stopped right there at home play. Dan Hunt with the foul call actually I hit the bat. That's again. what I was going to say. I think the bat might have actually helped stop that one. As you saw the McLean drop her bat right where she was at and kept the ball from spinning and going in any direction, whether it was going to be more foul or back into fair territory. Coach Bassett down in the third base coaching box calls out the number. His batters, his players have the wristbands. This one's going to be knocked into foul territory beyond the third baseline. Runs the count, one ball, two strikes, one out here in the top of the fifth. Again, Madeline McClain, no stranger to safeties as far as hitting the softball with that 410 average. Behind in the count on Fackler. You see McLean just a little bit ahead on these pitches. That one was a little bit more timed up as they got closer to the fair territory, but still going to be a foul ball. We'll see what Fackler decides to do with this one and try to see if she can't disrupt the timing of McLean. We talked about the two seniors for Ada being the leaders, uh, Glue Girls. So pop this one straight up and out of play. But this nucleus of juniors for Ada, they have been very successful throughout their careers. Five juniors start for the Bulldogs, and they bat in the first five spots in the lineup. Fackler hold on to that one for a little bit too long as it stayed up before dropping down. Brings the count to two balls, two strikes. This one's going to be popped up into center field as Lincoln View was able to settle underneath it. Andy Stevens squeezes that one, and that is going to be two outs here in the fifth. Addie Stevens, so strong out there in center field. Have watched her play that position and man that real estate over her career with so much success. Reels that one in as the previous batter as well. Both outs, fly balls out to Stevens here in the top of the fifth. Tessa Griffin is going to step to the plate. She reached on a fielder's choice back in the first inning. Flew out to the second baseman in the third. Makes contact, sends this one backwards. Runs the count, no balls, two strikes. When we mentioned those five juniors in the first five spots for Ada in the lineup, they all received recognition, all league style in the Northwest Conference, along with Daisy Robinson, the senior down in the eight hole. So it's going to go outside, one ball, two strikes. So Fackler. Battling a little bit more than when we saw her the last time on the mound, but still being effective out there. Big pitch right here. This one also carried outside. Nice job by Griffith to lay off of that one. Yeah, 
good plate discipline. That ball broke off the outer third of the plate. Looked like a strike coming in. Griffith does a nice job of not chasing it. It's this one off the end of the bat, down to the first baseman. As Ashlyn Price gathers it in, tags the base, and that is going to do it for the Bulldogs in the fifth. The Lancers still trail by one. They're coming to the plate. The Lancers coming to the plate here in the bottom of the fifth. Emma Bowersock will lead things off. As we will go 9-1-2 in the batting order for Lincoln View as they are trying to see if they can get the bats going and get on the Lee's Famous Recipes chicken scoreboard. A one to nothing game. See how this thing continues to play out, but it's been a whale of a softball game at the high school level, just what you would expect out of two teams trying to win a conference championship. Jenna Bassett has done a nice job all evening long out there. She has racked up four strikeouts so far. But here you are again, Nate. Two balls, the first two pitches. She's got to come back, and she does. And we have seen this time and time again, and she may fall behind, but she's able to find that strike when she needs to. Two balls, one strike. Bowersock waits the pitch. Swings through that one for strike two. Bowersock back in and ready. Bassett delivers and strike three as Emma Bowersock not able to connect or catch up to that one, excuse me. And that is going to be the fifth strikeout of the night for Jenna Bassett. Yeah, Bassett comes right back. She didn't climb the ladder because she only had thrown two balls, but man, did she come back with ferocity to get that strikeout. And there's a changeup to start Stevens with. So that's the center fielder, Addie Stevens at the plate. She walked her last time up in the third and flew out to the first baseman back in the first inning. Gonna pop this one up as this one is gonna be able to fall down into the outfield. And Lincoln View has a base runner. Stevens just goes with the pitch. The 472 batter picks up her first hit of the game. One for two with a walk. A one-out threat for the Lancers. Now Ashlyn Price is going to step to the plate, batting from the left side. Price is 0 for 2 tonight. Flew out to left field. Flew out to the third baseman. It's going to be on the inside. Runs the count even at one ball, one strike. Price 0 for 2 in the game thus far. 473 batter. It's going to travel a bit outside. Run the count at 2 and 1. You got to think that Jenna Bassett wants to take care of business here with Price at the plate. Trying to see if she can't keep Taylor Post from coming, coming up. This one's going to get fouled back. Two balls, two strikes. Sydney Fackler was a player that Coach Schwab mentioned about being one of the most improved players from last year to this year. Ashlyn Price, the junior, she has just had an outstanding season, and Coach Schwab mentioned her in that most improved category as well. Just been hot all year long with that 473 batting average, four triples on the season, and a first-team NWC selection as well. Nice and bad here by Price as she's been able to run the count to a full. This one going to get delivered out to right field, and it's going to be a double up as coming off the bat, Addie Stevens didn't have a great read on it. Not sure if she lost the count or just thought by the sound of it it was going to get go a little bit deeper. And she gets doubled up off of second, and that is going to bring the fifth inning to a close. Lincoln View still looking to get on the scoreboard and they're going to go back out to the field trying to see if they can't keep this a one-run game. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Lincoln View 
Bellevue High School. I'm Nick Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And tonight's presenting sponsor, Laudix Jewelry. Laudix Jewelry is your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. The Bulldogs come to the plate here in the top of the six with a six with a one run lead as Carly Wagner, the shortstop, will dig in. Wagner is 0 for 2 tonight, struck out back in the first, and then grounded out second to first in the third. Nice changeup by Sidney Fackler right there as Lincoln View does stay with Fackler here. We thought they might bring Taylor Post back into the circle to start off the top of the six, but they stay with Sidney Fackler against Wagner, Jordan, and Sizemore, a junior, a freshman, and a senior. First three up for Ada. This one's going to get hit to third. Nice job by Post as she delivers a strike across the diamond. That is going to be the first out here in the sixth. Yeah, Taylor Post charged that softball right there but couldn't get it on the big hop. Does an outstanding job of fielding it off of that big hop and then fires a dart to first base and one Ashlyn Price for the first out of the inning. So now it is going to be Reese Jordan coming to the plate. She is also 0 for 2 tonight. She flew out to left field back in the first before grounding out to the shortstop back in the third. Jordan finds herself down. No balls, one strike after that foul. Yeah, Jordan trying to sneak a bun in there for an infield base hit. I'll tell you what, you know, Fackler didn't quite look the same in the previous inning as we had seen her when she'd entered the first time. But she has come out here in the sixth and looks like she's cranked it up a little bit. She looks Pitches look a little bit more crisp, a little bit more um, on target, if you will. She looks like she's back to what she was when, we, when she came in that first time. In comfortable and in rhythm. That one sailed just a little bit high, said umpire Dan Hunt. As that is going to be one ball, two strike count is that had to be a difficult one for Jordan to lay <laughs> yes, off Yes, of. that's what I was thinking, Nate. Tough pitch not to swing at. This one's going to go outside, runs the count even, two and two. And our officiating crew, our umpire and crew, they have done a great job, Dan Hunt and Lucas Noggle. The teams have been at a top level, and so have our umpires. This one also goes outside is, just as soon as we started talking about the accuracy of Fackler, she's lost it here a little bit with three straight balls. It's a full count. Three balls, two strikes, one out here in the top of the sixth. I'm interested to see if, well, there's a foul ball. If Jordan gets on, will Coach Schwab think about doing the same thing as he has done previously when Post has been in the circle, bring her back in, and then rotate his defense with Fackler going to first and Price back to third? It's a wait-and-see kind of situation, but it's it's fun to theorize. Here comes the payoff pitch. It's going to get popped up as the left fielder will settle underneath that one. Emma Bowersock gets the out, and it's two down here in the sixth. Katie Sizemore steps to the plate now for the Bulldogs. She is one for two. She has been on base twice as she reached on an air back in the fourth and had a single back in the first. From the third inning on, Lincoln View has faced just one over the minimum as far as batters for Ada. This one's going to get fouled back. We've had an interference call in there to create a double play. One runner reached in the last inning, but that's been it since the second for the Bulldogs. Swing and a miss, strike two. As Katie Sizemore finds herself down in a big hole here. No balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the sixth. See how she battles. We haven't had many batters from either team face an 0-2 count because they've been swinging and making contact in the defense, as we've said earlier. It's been outstanding. Ackler delivers. That one is going to be low. going to be in. 
inside now. Runs the count even 2-2. Two, two. I think even Factor thought that one was going to be a strike as she started walking towards uh, the third baseline there. Well, that's a tough one to lay off. Again, both pitchers have worked the outer third successfully. And when you come in, as Sizemore makes good contact, that is going to be off the glove of the shortstop, Laney Spear. And the Bulldogs have a much needed base runner. Yeah, if nothing else but to neutralize the momentum here a little bit by not having many batters um, work through an inning. Lincoln has been very good in the circle here. Get a runner on with two outs. Just see if you can keep something going. That ball goes off of Spears' glove for an air on the Lancers. So now it's Daisy Robinson. She's going to step up to the plate. A little bit of an odd play the last time she came up as she hit one on the ground to the shortstop. And it looked like Lincoln View may have thought about trying to turn two, and there was a little bit of contact down there. It ended up being an interference call that wiped out both base runners. She fouls this one back to the fence, even the count of one and one. She does have a single up the middle as well today. One for two. Robinson steps in, runner down at first. Swings through that one. Nasty change up from Sydney Fackler right there. Great pitch. Looks like a yellow pumpkin coming in there. The only problem is, is that you were as a batter, you're thinking it's coming a lot faster. Great changeup by Fackler. So it's going to be a high and outside. Two balls, two strikes. It's in the DH tonight. Going to step back in. This one's going to get rolled down to post. Post fields it cleanly and delivers a strike for out number three. We continue to stay tight here in Lincoln View. It's one nothing with the Lancers coming to the plate. Taylor Poe stepping to the plate for Lincoln View as they find themselves down still one to nothing. Trying to see if they cannot get the bats going here in the sixth. That's what happened in their last game. They were able to finally get things going. They came alive. Ended up walking away with an 11-1 victory, and they are hoping for a repeat here tonight. Yeah, Allie Miller had a big three-run home run in the six against Columbus Grove, and then it was on for the Lancers as they ended up with the 11-1 victory in the district semifinal. They'll play Patrick Henry on Friday for a district championship. That game will be at Elida. This is the th first three ball, uh, three zero count, excuse me, that we have seen out of Jenna Bassett tonight. A lot of two zero counts, but she'd always been able to find a way to kind of write that, and we saw her get strikes pretty quickly. But here to open up the bottom of the six, she's in danger of walking the leadoff batter Taylor Post. Post takes that one and wasn't it, it was ball four hit by pitch. Whatever you want to put it in as. She's going to march down to first, and the leadoff batter is on for the Lancers. Yeah, Jenna Bass is going to have to recollect here now. The Lancers with the leadoff runner on. That's the first time they've had that situation since the third. Squaring up to Bunt as it gets by the third baseman. They can only go and get the, the out at first. A great bunt by Grace Brickner, and that moves Taylor Post up to the second. The sacrifice. Executed to perfection. Post in scoring position out there at second base now. And Ada does a nice job of getting the out. They got by the pitcher there initially. This one's going to get hit to the shortstop. Has to knock it down and not going to have a play anywhere. As I think she kind of got caught in between as Laney Spear was hustling down the line to the first base side. And I think Carly Wagner was also keeping an eye on post, maybe thinking she had a chance to get her at third. And it looks like we are going to have a pitching change for Ada. Going to move some people around as Coach Bassett. We'll see how that plays out. But Lincoln View with their first runner to reach third base in this game now in the bottom of the six. 
Bassett's going to stay in the circle. I really like the decision by Wagner there at shortstop. She bobbled the ball, didn't have a chance to get the runner at first. A lot of players would have thrown that regardless, and Taylor Post would have thought about scoring. When you've got a Jenna Bassett in the circle, you want to put yourself in a position. Oh, there's a bad throw, Nate. And that is the mistake that Lincoln View was looking for as the threat of Taylor Post down on third forced a bad throw from McLean down to third base as it hit the dirt in front of Sizemore, bounced away from her. Taylor Post comes scampering in, and Lincoln View finally has their first run of the game. We are tied at one. Yeah, I understand the defensive scheme right there. They were going to allow Spear to go to second uncontested, a fake throw, and then try and get the runner at third, but unable to execute Lincoln View on the board, and we're all knotted up, and Lincoln View with Spear at third base now. Serious opportunity, serious chance to go ahead. This one's going to get fouled out of play. Allie Miller at the plate. Allie has been up twice before. She is drawn a walk back in the second. She flew out to center field her last time up in the fourth. Looking to see if she can't get her first hit of the game. Knocks this one to ground right over the third baseman's head. That is going to allow Laney Spear to come home. That is the second run of the game. Lincoln View on top, two to one. Allie Miller standing on second base. Nice piece of hitting. Miller able to bring the wrist through the, the strike zone. The big hop goes over Katie Sizemore's head. Miller with the RBI. She advances to second as the ball was bobbled in left field. But the Lancers take the lead now, two to one. So we are going to have a, another mound visit. Last time we thought we were going to see a pitching change, and it just was Coach Bassett going out to kind of talk to his girls, maybe get some defensive alignments together. And I don't think we're going to have a pitching change here either, as I think he's just trying to talk, get everybody to calm down. I don't want this one to get away from him here in the bottom of the sixth. They just want to give themselves an opportunity to see if they can't tie this up or take the lead in the next inning. Yeah, it's it's the proverbial check up from the neck up. And, and right now, a good decision by Coach Bassett to go out and talk to his team. They've got to really, really bear down right now and try and keep Allie Miller stranded out there on the bases. The Lancers with Sidney Fackler, they want to play add-on. Sidney Fackler comes to the plate, pitch on its way, knocks this one down the right field line, and it's going to go just foul. That could have been trouble for the Bulldogs, but ends up just being a long strike. Runs the count to 0-1. Jenna Bassett. It's ready to deliver, sends the pitch, and she gets the strike. As Fackler quickly finds herself down 0-2. Bassett would love a strikeout here. She needs one in the worst way. Sends this one plateward. That one's going to be high and outside. That one also was hit with a lot of good contact, but a little out in front of that pitch as it's going to go foul. Sydney Fackler, she barely fouled down the right field line and barely fouled down the left field line. She's got a single up the middle, a single to left, working on a two for two day. I'd call that a spray hitter situation right now. She's spraying it all over the place. Fackler able to lay off of that one. A tough pitch as that came in. A lot of hitters would have thought that one looked good. Nice discipline to lay off of that one. Run the count two and two. Bassett delivers. This one goes outside. Back there making Bassett work for it. Ran this count full. Three balls, two strikes. One out here in the bottom of the six. Runner on second. This one is going to get fouled out of play as well. This back there is going to stay alive in the end bat. Jenna Bassett, she has had a great game pitching-wise. Only 
three walks at this point in time. But you think about it. She pitched the whole game last night, a 3-2 to two loss. And now in the sixth inning, Lincoln View looking to play add-on. Just out of the reach of the second baseman. This one's going to roll all the way to the fence. It is going to score uh, Miller from second as Lincoln View plays at home there on top, 3-1. to one. Backler with just an outstanding day, picks up the RBI, trades places with Allie Miller with the RBI double. Now it looks like it is going to be Lincoln View's turn as Coach Schwab is out talking with home plate umpire. They're going to have a pinch runner come in. That's number 12 for Lincoln View, Kiara Brees, a sophomore. So Jenna Bassett still out there trying to see if she can't get through this one and limit the damage. As Sylvia Longstrength that steps to the plate, she is 0 for 2 tonight. As she flew out to the shortstop and struck out. Far, the Bulldogs struggling here in this one. The only out they've been able to get was on a sacrifice bunt earlier in this inning. As Longstreth swings through that one, finds herself down 0-2. And Sylvia back in the batter's box, looking for the slap hit. And swung over top of that one. As on three straight pitches, Jenna Bassett is able to get her sixth strikeout of the game. Emma Bowersock now going to step in for Lincoln View. Going to try to see if she can't keep this inning going. Emma Bowersock also 0 for 2 tonight. Grounded out to second back in the second inning. And she was a strikeout victim last inning. Jenna Bassett would love just to be able to end this inning right here trying to let her team be able to come up in the top of the seventh to extend this game. Yeah, in the top of the seventh, it will be 9-1-2 for Ada. And what they hope will be a host of others as well. That pitch over the plate, strike one. One ball, one strike, two outs. Bulldogs trying to get out of the sixth here with minimal damage. A little bit of a late swing that time by Bauer Sonk. Not able to connect. She's going to be finds herself down to 1 2. We mentioned Greg Leith, the athletic director at Lincoln View. I see Ken Jokums, the athletic director at Ada, is here and made the trip tonight as well. Actually, I apologize. There was a change made by Lincoln View. That is not Emma Bauer Sonk. That is actually Cassidy Rank at the plate for her first plate appearance tonight. I think the help from those up with us here in the press box. Rank coming into the game, able to get this to a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Rank swings through that one as Jenna Bassett gets out of the inning. But Lincoln View finally able to get on the scoreboard. They put up three. They go to the seventh on top of three to one. We'll step aside and be back on the OSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpark, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. The Bulldogs come to bat here in the top of the seventh, find themselves trailing two. This bunt is going to go out of bounds as the Bulldogs right now know they just need base runners. Yeah, Laney Buxton squares up on that first pitch. Sydney Fackler. We saw her early, and then she went back to uh, first base, and now she's back in. It's been a real dynamic piece of coaching by Eric Schwab, rotating post and backler in the circle. Buxton watches that changeup come in as the off-speed pitch got her a little twisted up. It's going to be no balls, two strikes. Just got a piece of that one in Buxton to stay alive. O2, not an enviable position to be in when you're at the plate 
down two runs in the top of the seventh, but Eleni Buxton battling. Buxton waits for the pitch. This one's going to go outside. One ball, two strikes. Sydney Fackler, an outstanding job, perfect placement. Her catcher, Grace Brickner, set up right there. Not a strike, but oh, so hard to take. Good plate discipline by Buxton. This one comes through. Buxton able to make some contact, but sends it out to center field. And a very important first out for the Lancers. Buxton battles in there, gets good contact on the softball, but Addie Stevens, that's where base hits go to die out there in center field. She reels that one in for the first out of the inning. So the lineup's going to turn over for the Bulldogs as the leadoff batter Jenna Bassett checks in, swings on that one, no balls, one strike. Just been a great softball game all the way around. The Lincoln View offense wakes up in the bottom of the six. A little bit of help as the Ada defense had a couple of errors. But if Ada's going to do anything, Bassett's got to get on base here, Nate. Bassett awaits the pitch. Here it comes. Going to be fouled straight back. One ball, two strikes. They're going to put any pressure on this Lincoln View squad. You got to get your leadoff hitter, the leader of your team, Jenna Bassett, on base. Sydney Fackler has done a tremendous job here tonight. As we've seen her enter twice now. Oh, the changeup drops in with the off speed. A great job by Sydney Fackler. And that is two outs here in the seventh. That's only the second strikeout the whole game by the Lincoln View pitching staff. Tip your cap to Aiden, their ability to make contact, but boy, is that a big strikeout keeping Jenna Bassett off the base paths. So that brings up Aja Preston. She had a home run back in the first. That represents all the scoring for the Bulldogs tonight. She swings through the first pitch, finds herself down 0-1. The Lincoln View contingent getting loud on every strike. They can smell the Northwest Conference Championship. Maybe a little extra adrenaline on that one for Fackler. She held on to it for just a little bit too long. Runs the count to one and one. Same location on that pitch. Two balls, one strike. Major Preston, one for three tonight. As like we mentioned, the home run back in the first. Reached on a fielder's choice in the second. Blew out in the fifth, and that is strike two as Ada is down to their final strike. As they are trying to stay alive on the other side, Lincoln View trying to deliver the knockout blow and take home the outright conference championship. As Preston is able to deliver a strike right over the shortstop's glove. That one's going to run all the way to the wall as Preston is going to be standing up on second. And the Bulldogs are still alive after a big at bat by Adra Preston. Not so fast, my friends, as Adra Preston has had an outstanding day at the plate, going two for four now with a home run and a double. Keeps the game alive for the Bulldogs and Natalyn McLean, your batter. McLean one for three tonight. She had a single back in the first. She has flew out to center her last two times up. The power is there. The ability to put this one over the fence is possible for her as Fackler has to make sure that she pitches carefully here. Finds herself down one ball, no strikes. This one's going to get popped up. It's going to be playable. We'll see who's going to call it. And they are able to squeeze it. A great job by Ashlyn Price. As you knew, as that one left the bat, you got to keep your composure. She did just that. And the Lincoln View Lancers are the 2024 Northwest Conference champions. Congratulations to Lincoln View. What an outstanding season for Ada. 17 and four, they have one game to play. They gave it all today, and they had this game in hand for much of it. 
But the Lincoln View offense in the bottom of the six, they put three on the board, and they are your 2024 Northwest Conference softball champions. Lincoln View has a tremendous year, a lot of great players. Hats off to Ada as well, though. They have had an absolutely tremendous year as well. A tough loss today, but there's no shame in getting knocked off by this Lancer squad. Lincoln View. Your 2024 NWC champions, they still got a little bit of work to do. Next up for them is a chance at a district title. They'll play Patrick Henry on a Friday night for that championship and the honor to move on through tournament play. As always, David, it has been fantastic being able to call the game with you tonight. I always enjoy our time together. We would like to thank our sponsors one final time. Our scoreboard brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. And our presenting sponsor, Lawless Jewelry in Van Wert. Good morning. Until next time, it's been a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your spring. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And